Hello and welcome to the Moncast Tri series episode two. This time we're talking about Tri Part Two Determination and which versions did we watch? I watched the dub. How about you two? I also watched the dub. I watched the sub. Quinn, did you watch with episodes or film? Uh, I watched the film. You watched the film. Nelson, how about you? Episodes. Episodes. So we've got two people who watched the film dub and one person who watched the episodes subbed. <laughs> But we all got the main gist of things. I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I'm joined by two people today, again. And it's Nelson and Quinn, the same people from last time. Hello. Oh. There we go, now we can talk about things. Better. <laughs> So I've done a, a dumb plot summary again. So it starts off where Digi Kids go to the not Digi Spa with the Digi Digimon and the Digi Digi government agents. <laughs> it's Digi time again. It's Digi Digi time again. This is what happens when you watch the dub, people. Just don't. Just go with the sub, please. It, it's a poor choice. It's a poor choice, but it's a one I do not regret. So then Leomon and Ogamon fight and interrupt Mimi and Mei Mei's date. And it turns out the helicopters aren't cactus proof, much to Mimi's dismay. So then Joe and Mimi have a long heart to heart by the bridge, uh, and Kari just kind of eavesdrops because she's a bit weird like that. And then Gobamon just takes a very long walk all by himself <laughs> without a chill. After this, everyone, and, and I mean everyone, just goes to the school festival where Maki changes her name to Miss Suspicious, and Ken turns up to Meikunap Meikumon. So after this, <laughs> Gomamon and Palmon reach mega levels through the power of narcissism and dabbing to defeat <laughs> Imperial Digimon. And then Leomon dies at Meikumon's claw, and this bit was so traumatic I couldn't make a joke out of it. And then the film ends. What do you mean traumatic? It happens every single Digimon series! Still, the way they did that scene was really good. At least in the dub. I can't remember if the sub was good, but I assume it was. No, it, it was good. I, I, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just that person. I'm just so used to Leomon dying. Um, whenever he appears, I just think, yeah, you're gonna die. I'm not gonna get attached. You're just gonna die. I know this. It was a little faster than I expected. It was pretty quick. Really, guys? Would you not to say, I didn't expect him to die, I just thought he'd make it into the next movie. That would have been nice. I doubted it the moment he was fighting Gogurmo, I'm sorry. Eh, fair. Was there any important plot points I missed that you want to mention? Well, you didn't You didn't really cover the fact that we spend a fifth of our movie in the hot springs. Well, that's what the, the Digi Kids in the Not Digi Spa bit was. Or, so we missed the part where the Lekmo actually made an appearance with, and it was total, totally integral to the plot. Oh yeah, that brief intro. It was just there. It was just like, look, someone's wrecking the primary village. Again. Again, <laughs> yes. And this time it's Ogremo. I guess he's not wearing his samurai gear anymore. He's just f***ed off. That's too bad. That's a shame. Wait, he died though and then was reincarnated, so it kind of makes sense. Wait, he, he, he died? Did he die? The Ogremon didn't die. Leomon died. Just Leomon died. They're the same thing. Well, I'm curious. I remember Leomon dying, but... Being able to digivolve, does he still have that? I would guess not. Ah, oh, that's BS. Or he would have used it, I would think. I'm used to Dragon Ball Z, I doubt it. This is story animation, after all. So, with this one, it's kind of a Joe and Mimi film, which is just automatically the best thing ever. Attention, when he says Joe and Mimi, it means 70% Mimi, 10% other kids, 20% Joe. Yeah, and the 20% of Joe is the best bit. But there is a lot of Mimi as well to appreciate. There's too much Mimi, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't like her that much. You're wrong, but okay. <laughs> I had a feeling Quinn would say something along those lines. <laughs> That's because Quinn likes her, her outfits, okay? <laughs> no... No. No? No, Mimi's good for other reasons. Yeah, her, her fashion sense is actually just objectively terrible. <laughs> oh, come on, didn't you like that Adventure 1 outfit callback in the beginning? Yeah, I, I saw that. Just a moment of silence <laughs> for Mimi's outfit. <laughs> hey, at least she wasn't wearing the, the brown gloves this time. That's true, that's an improvement. Definite improvement. And it was a slightly better hat. The outfits are just all bad in the series, though. Excuse you, uh, Izzy's outfits are always on point. I know not what you talk about. Okay, excluding Izzy's, because Izzy's just the best. And TK, of course, al always, with that summer camp shirt. They all just say summer camp on them. Oh my god, what is with the summer camp shirt? For a moment, I thought uh, it was like a reference to panic camp or something like that. 
The one argument is that it's a reference to Summer Camp, the band that had a song in the, uh, the Digimon movie dub soundtrack. But otherwise, it's just a generic advertisement for the fact that he went to Summer Camp once. Maybe he just misses it. You no, know, you know what? I, I think it's probably one of the f- the failed bands his brother had, and he made a t-shirt just in case. I mean, with the names, I wouldn't be surprised. There's a new name now, which is World on Knife. Uh, well, so that was changed just for the day, so that they could perform in the school thing. Because World on the Knife is so much better than Knife of Day. Yeah, I mean, instead of removing the knife, let's just remove the edge. <laughs> But TK has more than one shirt with Summer Camp on it, because there's one in the first film as well. Yeah, and it's a different color. He has this shirt in, like, six colors. I'm sure it's some Japanese thing we foreigners don't get or something. Maybe. Like Perhaps. Maybe they just really like Summer Camps. You don't know. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty, you know, important to him. So how about those hot springs, everyone? Yeah, let's start the stuff for a change. I really like the hot springs. Th- nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, 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 there's foreshadowing. What do you mean nothing happened? There's foreshadowing. What is it foreshadow? Well, there's Mei Mei taking a peek at Ty's... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> that's not so much foreshadowing, it's just a thing that will continue to happen. There's Mei Kumo feeling weird while she's alone. There's also the, the teacher man that's saying that he's really close to the government woman, getting smacked in the back. Yeah, okay. I still want to know if they're dating or not, but I will. Daigo is my new dad, by the way. <laughs> Fair enough. And besides that, I guess there's TK helping Kyrie when she's in the man's bathroom? What? What does that foreshadow? She's used to see him naked. I don't know. That's not so much foreshadowing as it is just a thing that happened. But that did happen. Also, power move on Mako's part, going, Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't see anything. Uh, my glasses were fogged up. Takes off glasses, looks down at his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's pretty good. You see Ty, like, look, looking to the side, like, Yep, she's staring. She's taking it all in. <laughs> There's also the part where Ty is embarrassed because Sora is there, and Sora is all surprised because Ty was with Matt. But oh well. Do we count foreshadowing to love triangles as important things? No, I'm I'm just, I'm just pulling my straws here at this point. <laughs> There's nothing else. Not a lot of important stuff happens, but it is cute. Mekuma went missing, and Bioma went missing. <laughs> That's total foreshadow, because Mekumo's gonna go missing at the end. Yeah, it's foreshadowing because Palmon span around a bit, and that happened later as well. You see, the spinning signifies the digivolution. Oh no, I think it's linked more to the, the needle spray, which was spinning around in the air. That's what I was alluding to. Clearly. <laughs> you didn't catch it, but in one frame, you could just see it, like one single line leaving away from it. Now, nothing happened in the spa, but I very much enjoyed it still. Oh, I'm definitely into it. It was just character building, quote unquote. I liked it. It's just slice of life stuff. And I'm glad it was more just contained to one bit instead of in like the first film where it was just everywhere. You need context. That's the thing. The context for this was they wanted to go to a spa. And welcome me. And welcome Mei Chan and Mei Mei. I can't get those two confused, I'm sorry. I don't know which is which from that. Uh, Mei Chan is Meikuman. Mei Chan is Meikuman. And then Mei Mei is Mei. Short for Meiko. Yes, it is. It may get confusing. It will be confusing. <laughs> No, that's Willis. Completely different character. So it's almost like they, they made it on purpose to name this Digimon after a person or something. Maybe it's a one-of-a-kind Digimon that's named after the, the Tamer. I'm having flashbacks to Takeromon, but oh well. I, have a, I feel like the production has jumped up in this film. And I got the impression like from very early on that it just seemed better. Like I felt it looked better and sounded better. I don't know if you had the same impression. I, I felt that... But when they when they digivolve into their um, megas and their ultimates, I felt like there was a, a lack of effort in drawing them. But oh well. Yeah, though they put it all into the jiggle physics. Wait, there was jiggle physics? I didn't notice. On Rosemond's breasts, yes, there was a lot of jiggling going on. It's kind of creepy, actually. It's also to be expected, which makes it worse. I mean, she is a dominatrix, so, I mean... Dominatrix. That's a a new way to pronounce it. I'm not American, I'm not British. Leave me alone, okay? (laughs) I think that's an adorable way to pronounce it. Yeah, you keep calling it what you want to. What else is adorable, though? 
is the Digimon. Because the Digimon are the best, and we all know this. They are just the cutest. Especially Mei-chan. Just ask Leomo. I just need to say this. I feel like Meikumo was made into a champion Digimon just to avoid some very weird accusation towards Leomo. I, I just I just gotta get that out there. What, because it would be a, an adult and a child otherwise? Yes, I feel like that. that's the reason why. I think it was for the Tikari illusions, but... That's okay. Yeah, for the matching up with Gatamon. That's probably why they did it. But it's funnier if they did it for your reason, Nelson. It's kind of weird Leomo just finds her extremely attractive. I don't think it's that. She's just that cute. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that weird. Plus she calls him Senpai. Not in the dub, which made me sad. What does she call him in the dub? I don't think she calls him anything. I think just Leomon. Also, is it he or she? Because I think they said different things in the dub throughout the film. Mekuman is, I think, pretty clearly female, especially when you see the evolved form. They might have just, like, edited one of the lines badly, because I could have sworn that Mei Mei called Mekuman he at one point. Maybe? I don't know, a lot of people were asking that, and I'm like, eh, Mekuman can just be NB, it's fine. They did you want? They don't have genders, come on, people. You could have a, a, a Rosemont that has a male voice, believe me. Mm-hmm. The only series where they introduced gender was in Cross Wars, when you had a, a couple of a Stingmo and a Lilymo. Yeah, that's true. And then, I guess, Cutemon's parents. Ah, uh, yeah, and also you got, I think it's Bastemo? Like, the, the the cat one? I don't remember that one, but that's okay. Because there's, like, there's literally two forms for that one. Very, uh, infrequently applied, and doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's not important. What's more important is that Mekumon is a, a crazy cat that kills people. It's not her fault. I don't know that yet. Look, I'm gonna blame Kokomon for this. I'm sure he has something to do with it. And this was, is with me forgetting all the other movies. I don't even know if Zero Two is canon in this, so it might not be that. It is canon, because they recognize him. But the dead! That must happen later, you'll find out. I don't know what happens later, that's the whole point. We're telling you O2 is canon. Okay, they'll need to explain the whole the red light show at the start of the first film then. They don't do much... But you'll get there. Yeah, don't worry about it. I very much look forward to it. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> it's something so minor. It'll just go like, why would? Why, why did this happen? Why didn't you explain that five movies ago? Because that would be too easy. They need everyone to watch six films before they just say, okay, you can stop paying now. But yeah, Meikuman's kind of just cute, 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 and then evil. <laughs> just out of nowhere, just like, I'm going to murder your friend and then leave. <laughs> They foreshadowed that a little bit in uh, the last movie. She had some evil on her face for a while there. Oh, the dark Digivice. A Digivice thing was pretty cool. Oh, uh, about the Digivice thing, anyone see the X on it? Yeah. Ooh. I I'm just going to ask, she doesn't have the X antibody, does she? She does not. Okay, then that's BS. <laughs> Why show the X? Why show the, the, the Digivice go into, into all, all dark? Because the X makes it sound cool. Bull****. I'm sorry. I thought, oh my god, is she like having a X death digivolution or something? Nope. 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 That is a thing, by the way, audience. There's like 15 types of digivolution. Learn them all. Gotta catch them all? What? <laughs> Nothing. There's digivolution, DNA digivolution, armor digivolution, spirit digivolution, X antibody digivolution. Death X antibody digivolution. <laughs> Slide evolution, fusion evolution. Warp evolution. Cross digivolution. Dark digivolution. Does that count? Yes, it counts. I think it does. In the Japanese version, there's uh, Cho Shinka and uh, I can't remember the, the next one. Ah, uh, Warp Shinka. Oh, there's D digivolution. That's calling degenerating, I think. I'm up to like 10. That's a reasonable number. There's lots. There's not many in this film, though. Oh, we forgot Warp digivolution, though. No, you didn't. I said it. Oh, never mind. But the Tri people did. They forgot Warp Digivolution. They just go all the way up now. Hey, at least this time they had animations. Yeah, that's good. It gives them an excuse to show Lilymon and Zudemon, which I appreciate. I love them. I love them. Become them, do one attack, then Digivolve again. Just for fan service. Oh, oh, by the way, I just want to point something out. I know it has no complete meaning in the story, but the part where Gabumo doesn't want to take off his pelt for the spa. That's cute. It's on point. And then they make him and they don't show him, because he is an Eldritch Abomination underneath. <laughs> <laughs> so, supposedly he's a he's a dragon Digimon, surprisingly. He's just like Agumon with a horn. Yeah, it, it's supposedly like he hides the fact of being a dragon Digimon and just becomes a beast Digimon, just cuz. Apparently he takes Gaburimon's fur, 
So that just raises the question of how. <laughs> yeah, so I, there used to be the, a fan theory that it was just an Agumon that had stolen fur. And then put paint on its chest. <laughs> Wait, what's the name of that Pokemon that presents to be Pikachu? It's Mimikyu! Gabumon is Mimikyu! Pokemon stole him! <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's all I have to add to the spa thing. <laughs> Besides that, the spa is just like twenty-five minutes of fun and cute. How about we talk about the biggest issue in the movie? That's Mimi. I'm sorry, Quinn. That's okay. I'm pretty okay with Mimi, actually. Yeah, like you know, especially she—they make a big thing out of how terrible it is that you know she would volunteer an idea when no one else volunteered to do anything. I hate the way they did it. It's like, okay, I, I, I get that Mimi's like in your face about everything and like is the type of person that says says what's, her, what's on her mind and really doesn't care about much, but I thought she went, she got over that. Didn't she get over that in Adventure or something? I don't remember that. She kind of learned to just accept that, and, you know. She, she's finding a balance here between never speaking at all and saying what she thinks all the time. Yeah, that's fine. But she also didn't find that balance, because at the end they just show it how it's a good thing, because Mei Mei decided to grow up because of her. So, like, I, I don't get it. Like, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? They didn't really show anything. It's just being her. They kind of decided that really everyone else was wrong for telling Mimi off. And they were. I mean, yeah, the, those girls were, were a little bit rough, but still, like... Nah, they were full-on mean girls. F*** them. Yeah, but what Izzy said was not wrong, though. Oh yeah, the stuff with the Digimon, she was just way out of line. Yeah, she was kind of wrong about the, the Digimon. And if anything, it wasn't her fault, it was Palmo's fault, but assigned to, hey, let me just spray some needles while there's a, an helicopter around here. I'm like, okay. You know, having an omnidirectional attack is just really not that helpful. Wasn't the point of that just pushing him in, back into the distortion, though? <laughs> That's the thing. Why not just keep on punching him? Punching would have been more helpful. How many times did Leomon grab Ogamon, though? <laughs> and just drag him back? I think it's two. I think it's two times. I don't know where Ogamon went when Togamon fought them. Let me see, there's the one when they're, they're shooting the electric machine guns at him. Oh, that, that part's pretty cool, and doesn't lead to anything. Yes, they never show the gun again. <laughs> well, it comes back briefly. Maki has one. Ah, okay. It's because it didn't really work. That's why they don't come back. It's just such a weird little plot point to introduce. Just bring a tank and shoot and shoot at it on mass. I'm sure it will work. It's probably just there to go. This is why the government's not doing anything, and why the kids do everything still because the government can't do diddly squat with their weapons. So that's why they just end up utilizing the kids for everything. You're using him as tools, especially Maki. Calm down. Yeah, I say utilizing. The government agents are, are pretty hands off. Honestly, they kind of just follow them around. Yeah, that's sort of true, but they're also, they didn't exactly give them a choice or offer them any amount of real counseling or advice. I mean, no, 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 they, they have counseling. Yeah, his name is Daiga. <laughs> that's true. He's very unhelpful. Those Digimon who look infected, they're infected Digimon. He gives them moral support. Moral support and donuts. Yes. Dizzy dislikes donuts, so I don't, I don't know what you're going to do about him. He doesn't dislike them, he just didn't want one, but then he took one anyway. He did? No, that was Sora. No, so so Sora wanted, clearly wanted one, but was telling off Ty, and he was like, no, no, go ahead. And then she was like, well, I, I guess it don't, she would be rude not to. Because she clearly wanted one. She started reaching into the bag and then changed her mind. Like, oh, if Ty is doing this, it's totally wrong. I can't do this. It's a good rule of thumb. He's not Davis, okay? He's actually decent. Ty was never an idiot. I appreciate, though, that Ty and Matt both became background characters in this. Yeah. I kind of wish they'd stayed that way. The whole plot line from last film was kind of just a dumb argument. They're still having it. Yeah, they're still having it. You also got Kairi, like, being an advisor to, uh, advisor to Ty, so... Yeah, she does that a lot. That's her whole role in the series. <laughs> no, she also eavesdrops on deep conversations between other Digidestins. <laughs> and she also glows sometimes. It's great in the dark. She's not done any glowing yet. Well, she's done plenty eavesdropping. Yes. She just follows Joe, like, everywhere in this film. Well, it's not her fault. Joe just happens to be there. I'm surprised she even found him near the ending, though. She also really waited to tell him anything was going wrong. And she's the only one who acts on that. It's it's not Sora, the one who's supposed to be motherly or anything. No, it's Kairi. Everybody forgot th that Sora's crest was love, didn't they? Uh, no, I remember that. Uh, everybody else kind of just gave up on the idea that... Joe was ever going to help, which kind of sucks. Connor was talking to Ty, and Ty was just like, we need to let him come back on his own terms. Which makes sense. But then Connor was just like, 
no, we need him to come back now. I'm going to go grab him. It's more like, oh no, he has to figure his stuff out. Couldn't you talk to him? You sure, you sure you don't want to figure that out? I'm like, what? go go to bed, Kyrie. I don't like you anymore. It was more just like, Joe, go my mom's gonna die. Sort your out and come over here, please. Stop being a wuss. We we didn't mention, I think, that Goemon, like, ran away from home, and uh, Izzy, for some reason, just goes along with it and won't tell him? Because Goemon asks him to. And Tentomo reassures him. And complains about the lack of donuts. That's what happens in the dub. I don't remember Tentomo's voice in the dub, but in the sub, he comes out, uh, comes out as, a, like, an el- ed- elderly hermit or something. I don't know why, I just love it. I think Tentomon's voice is good in both dub and sub. Yeah, that's fair. I, I like it. I think we've moved off of Mimi because we got bored of her. She was kind of just l- very loud and then decided that being loud was good. And that was her arc. <laughs> she had a f- sort of understandable thing. People were kind of being <laughs> to her for speaking her mind. And so she was thinking she shouldn't. Well, she, she was kind of right about why she was that, that way. I mean, everybody just kept quiet and just went complaining behind her back. Yeah, I think she just kind of learned to not focus on the mistakes. And just carry on doing what she's doing. It's a fairly basic little lesson, but, you know, not a bad one. Look, the lessons I learned with Mimi is that the power of manhood is is more powerful than research, okay? Izzy gave up on his research. Ah, that was so good. Being sent an emergency message that's just a picture of Mimi. And he's like, oh god! <laughs> Off I go, bye. Tentomo just sees her and goes like, oh my. He even puts on a suit! That little bow tie. Oh god. He was all all relaxed, all Hawaiian, just goes into a suit out of nowhere. My god. I really appreciated the Digimon uh, abridged take on Joe's problem, which is Joe, stop trying to be a doctor and write a book. You're like one of twelve people who's ever had these experiences. Just write a book, you'll be rich and famous. I would read that book. Oh, by the way, did you see like Joe's parents commentating on? Oh, wow, the, the Digimon are fighting again. Yeah, but what about Joe? Uh, he's still he's having difficulties in school. Ah, uh, well, as long as he does his best. <laughs> yeah, they're really shitty parents. <laughs> Hands off parenting one on one. In the dub, they're just like, oh, I hope he doesn't work himself too hard. Oh no, and the and the sub was like, oh, I hope he does well. He's seventeen, and they they just they don't care anymore. Oh, but come on, Mondo, like that's so sad. Oh. Yeah, Gomamon deserves better. I mean, they both deserve each other. Come on. They are both pretty damn good boys. That's true. Sometimes you need your opposite to bring out the best in you. Ah, that's some deep stuff. Yeah, man. Gomamon's a surfer dude, Joe's just a nerd. Together, they become a surfer nerd. (laughs) Fair enough. A surfer nerd must be a real thing that exists, right? Probably. It's literally just a guy that surfs but wears glasses while doing it. God, you'd have to replace those all the time. No, because he, he tapes them onto his head. He's just the one looking at waves, like making calculations in his head, but never catches the wave because he's too busy doing the calculations. <laughs> just want to point out also, Komomo knows how to cook. I don't know how the hell he knows how to cook, but I love it. It's really good. He cooks so much. He's such a good boy. He's the best seal. He is the best boy. Also, Tentomo kind of let him be there because there's so many meetings in the building. They kind of need someone to make food. His job was to do stuff and food, but mainly food. Make food. I think the Digimon did more in this film than they did in the first one, which made it a lot more fun. The Fine did more, please. They had more fun stuff that they did. Oh, skits. Yeah, comedy bits. The comedy was a lot better, because there actually was comedy. I, I pity Leomo a little bit. Just when they're all yelling at him. Even Gatomo. Isn't she supposed to be a champion? But she's also hungry. <laughs> Gomamo can make food. They all wanted to go to the festival. Yeah, I know, but still, like, come on. <laughs> I was really not a fan of the, the creepy cute costume contest being advertised by a cross-dressing dude. No, I... That didn't wax off his legs? That That was just poor taste. It's Japanese culture. That doesn't make it good. I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying it's Japanese culture. Yeah, that gets bad points. But at least that was the only instance of that. Well, how about that dichotomy with Daigo, Daigo and Mike? One's a, a, a fully grown child, the other's a fully grown adult. Yeah, but you find out later which one is which. You find out later? What do you mean? Is, isn't it obvious? No, Maki's backstory makes some, some real interesting interpretations of what's happening in these films. Oh, like that smile at the, uh, like at the last frame when Leomon dies? She's so evil. 
And she just happens to leave makeup on behind. When I saw that the first time, I was like, did she smile? Let me rewind that. Holy <laughs> she smiled, what the <laughs> Yep. Yeah, she's so evil. I mean, I wouldn't say she's evil. She's not technically evil, but she does some real, real <laughs> things. She's been using Mako, hasn't she? For something, I don't know. I feel like, did she want... Ken to find out about Makomo, or was that just pure accident? That's something I always question, like, about that scene, because she actually sounds surprised. Ken finding out was unimportant to it. The important thing was uh, Makuman going crazy. Yeah. Also, why the hell is Ken there? You'll find that out. All will be explained. But at this point in the series, it's just like, here's Ken. He's evil. Deal with it. Oh, if, if you expect them to try and contact the O2 kids, by the way. Yeah, forget about it. That, that's not going to happen. Even though they go to the same school and everything. Wow. That's just neglectful. Just forget about them completely. So the kids have been gone for about a year, but it's really weird that there's never any dialogue that explains what the kids think of that. Wait, wait. A year in human time or in Digimon time? They're, they're the same now. They're the same. How is that the same now? They synced up after the defeat of the Dark Masters. Yeah. A- at the end of... Wait, eh? They did? At the end of Adventure, yeah. All of O2, they're the same. I don't remember that. Uh Uh-huh. It's in the last episode of Adventure 1. What? I don't remember that. I remember... Yeah, Jenna, it's just like, you fixed it. (laughs) Woohoo. Okay, fair enough. I I really don't remember that. Anyway, yeah, so they've been gone for a year in both worlds, so I guess it's fair that the kids, you know, have gotten used to the idea that they're gone. When when do we find out they've been gone for, for a year, though? I don't know about that. After what Stevie has seen, and it's only briefly mentioned. What the... And, and there's no posters, there's no nothing signifying they've been... No, they're just totally okay with the fact that they're gone, and apparently decided to never speak of them again. To be fair, if you, if you lost those three characters, would you really care? I would care if I lost Yoli. I mean, Davis was pretty sucky, Yoli was bleh, and Cody was just nothing. <laughs> Yoli was pretty good, but needed more time. And I like Yoli. Cody was a good boy. He's an okay boy. People who weren't Ken and Davis should have gotten more screen time. It's really the only issue with people who aren't Ken and Davis. I still regret Ken ending up with Yuli, but oh well, that's another thing. Yeah, that's fair, because Yuli's gay. Wait, what? <laughs> oh yeah, she's gay for Kyrie, isn't it? Well, and just in general. She's also pretty into Mimi. Who isn't? Right? Mimi and Maymay in this, literally just going on a date. It was so heartful. Oh, even I agree there. To just like the best ship. Would it be Mime or Mamie? Mamie. No, Mamie's the dominant dominant one in the relationship. Mime, okay? Yeah, Mime. I didn't know that was a rule, but I don't do fanfics. Hey, how about how about that picture TK took of her while while in the in the cheerleader outfit? Oh yeah, TK was in this film. He didn't do much. He didn't do much, but he still managed to win the award for worst fashion sense. That's all he did was just dress badly and take pictures of women. <laughs> There's also the banter between him and, him and Kairi whenever he, he's near Meimei. Hikari got it so bad, and he does not care. I still feel they're dating somehow, but oh well. They've made it pretty clear they're not. She's just into him. And he's not? No, which is kind of weird. But like, even when he catches her, she starts blushing. Oh, I noticed that. Well, she is fully dressed, then. She's fully dressed. He's not. I mean, I, I think any girl in that situation would blush, but, oh well. Also, how about that scene where Mimi just started singing in the sauna? It was so good. As a distraction, by the way. Yep, in the Japanese, her singing I Wish is really good. In the dub, she just sings a song about how it's definitely not a distraction song. <laughs> okay, that, that that's good. It's funnier, but it's not as good a song. I was really hoping they'd do something with the I'm gonna sing you a song, a song that will wake you up from the old dub. Okay, Nelson probably will hate me, but I actually preferred the dub. Oh, I hate you already. I don't know what you're talking about. I'd say they were about even. There were some problems with the the sub as well, just in terms of making certain story beats very clear. I think the dub definitely improved a lot over the first dub film. No, I need to rewatch it, don't, don't I? Not with the dub. You don't have to. I felt the dub was much more dubby, if that makes any sense. Were there puns? Yeah, I felt like they added in a few more jokes. They weren't, like, over the top with it, but it just made it feel more like what I expect the dub to be like. Look, until they make the intro song, the the original Japanese one, and just put subtitles like they did with the ending song, I I think I 
What's wrong with Digi Digimon? Digi Time was a really poor choice. I'll give I'll give you that. And they didn't even stick with their guns, though. That's that's the worst part because the outro is just a Japanese song with subtitles. What's wrong with Digimon? Digi Digi Digimon. I mean, it has like a full word for its lyrics. <laughs> Well, they're also fighting to save the world. Guys, I, I, I remember this, because I'm all over this place. You know how Meikumo kind of just goes like, Oh no, I don't want to go back to Mei and stuff, at the end? Yeah. I just realized that was because of the pudding. The pudding? She asked Mei Mei for some some pudding while she's serving. And Mimi basically calls her over to, to dance. And she's like, oh no, no, I can't dance, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, and just runs away. You just have this scene of, of Mei Kumon go like, oh, but I want pudding. Why are you being so mean, Mei? And just goes away, just muttering, why are you being so mean? Why are you being so mean? <laughs> like, what the hell? I think that's the foreshadowing to just her hating May or something like that. Because of the lack of pudding. <laughs> yes! There's literally nothing else to signify it. I think she just felt more ashamed because she like put everyone in danger by being kidnapped. I didn't get that feeling. I just got like, oh no, she, she's, just, she's just going into Leomo for absolutely no reason besides, I don't want May. The other explanation is she was also feeling unwell because of the infection monster that was about to break out of her. What the infection monster? She did nothing. She became a vicious monster and killed Leomon, remember? Yeah, but that's at the end. She got triggered. It's still totally inside her, though. True, but May, May controls it for some reason. Like, I don't know what reason, but she controls it. Not well. I'm not too sure about that. Look, I'm just saying, it's the only scene that would foreshadow her not wanting to go back to me. Fine. <laughs> Whatever. Quinn, what do you think about this? Am I, am, I, am I overreaching here? Yeah, a little. We should have given her pudding, and then everything would have been solved. Precisely. You know, that's actually probably canon. Pudding is a pretty good solution to many people's problems. Is it canon that Makerman just wanted pudding? <laughs> When I such Meikumo wanted pudding, there's a fan fiction in the in the first spot. Really? <laughs> yeah. A Royal Conspiracy, Chapter Nine: A New Beginning. I'll link it. I want to read it. There, there's also one. There's like Fireden.net. Go something something Meikumo something something. Did Taichi eat the pudding she was saving or something? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Look, it's my head canon that clearly, clearly Meikumo just dark digivolved because of pudding. Okay. Yeah. Nothing can tell me otherwise. <laughs> I mean, it's as good as any other explanation, because we don't get one in this film. Yeah, I mean, in Adventure 1, Agumon did Dark Digivolve because he was overfed, so... Yeah, but Makerman was underfed, so they should have light Digivolved. <laughs> that's how it works? So that's why Pantamon goes to Wanjimon, huh? He never eats. Exactly. He used to stay light to do all that boom bubbling. It's filled with hot air. That's, that, that's my reasoning. So how about that fight scene, though? That fight scene was pretty cool. It was also kind of brutal just seeing when Gobamon was just being whacked away multiple times. I'm surprised the champion Digimons could actually do some harm to Imperial Drama. But they didn't do any harm, they just kind of distracted it. And then Imperial Drama was just like, no. I disagree there. Only because you actually see him flinching a few times. Well, yeah. I mean, if I punched you in the face, even, like, fake punch, you would still flinch. I don't know, man. I mean, Togemon's pretty pointy. I, I forget whether or not they ever uh, show the O2 kids Digimon coming back, because I, th I think we killed Imperial Dramon. I, I think Ken and Davis might just not have Digimon anymore. I just didn't question that it was Imperial Dramon. I was just like, cool, Imperial Dramon. Carry on. You're clearly going to do whatever you feel like. I, I, I don't think that was actually Imperial Dramon, though. I think that was a black Imperial Dramon, though. Just because of the color coding. Yeah, I assumed that was the infection. Yeah, the art style was interesting. In the void. And then Izzy's just like, I will hack into the void. He did it. With live web feed. Uh, yeah, they're also, they never tell us where, what dimension that is. They kind of just call it the digital world. It's just the void. It's just the dark place with Ken, who's a hologram, who takes Meikumon and then just gives it back. Because why not? Yeah, I I'm just surprised. For first of all, the fighting scene. I thought this was a little bit messy, but yeah, that's that's just me, I guess. Just animated gorgeously, but a little bit messy. Yeah, they had a lot to get in there, just like because they were balancing the battle with Joe's emotional battle with himself, or whatever, and Mimi's shouting. Oh, all I got from that was that uh, basically for your Digimon to go to his mega level, you just gotta shout real loud into a computer screen. Well, that was Mimi's approach. That's definitely what works for Mimi. 
And it was also Joe's approach. <laughs> Joe's approach was to basically moan for the whole film and then decide, you know what, I'm not going to moan anymore. He, he turned into Shinji Ikari for a moment. Then basically, that's what I got. Yeah, kind of. He, he didn't want to get in the robot. Basically. I'm just surprised they, they didn't have to fight Leomo. I thought he was comp- was going to just turn over and just go berserk, but nope. He, he would have. I mean, I, I didn't get I thought I thought he was just going insane, but nope. I mean, his eyes turned white. He was about to kill some dudes. I, I was expecting him, like, getting infected and going to fight, like, Imperial Dramo, because why not? That would have been neat. But instead, right as he was about to go kill them, he got shanked. Yeah, he got shanked real good. That, that form of Maycomon also has a name, by the way. It's May Crackmon, isn't it? No, May Crackmon is the next one. Is it May not quite cracked yet, Mon? I think it's Maycomon just vicious mode or something om- among those lines. Maycomon brutally murder Leomon mode. It's an unnamed form, but people used to call it like vicious mode. I want to officially call it brutally murdered Leomon mode. <laughs> Accepted. It has been passed. It's now known as Make Him Out Brutally Murder Leomon Mode. <laughs> BML Mode for short. You can only use it under very certain circumstances. Only when there's a Leomon around to brutally murder. So I also liked how they stopped using 3D for, for this evolution. I just want to point that out too. Yeah, they stopped it for the Lilymon and Rosemon bits. And Zudamon and Vikemon. The new ones. 3D Kakomo looked weird. He dabs. He totally dabs. I didn't see the dab, but if you say so, I believe in you. I need you to see the dab and appreciate the dab. I, I prefer if you don't show me the dab. Oh, you gotta see the dab. But I don't want to see the dab. I found a video to share with you. Just watch it now and you will see the dab. Okay, I'm watching this. I'm also watching it again now just because I need to see the beautiful, the beautiful dab. That is not a dab. When does he dab? Right at the very end. No, that's not a dab. He just puts his paw up and another one down. What the hell? That's totally a dab. That is not a dab. Pretty damn close. It's not quite a dab, but it's there. The only other thing it's close to is a, a Hitler salute, so take your pick. You're not making this easy, you know this, right? What's worse, Nazis or dabbing? I'll go with dabbing. I think dabbing is worse at this point. Well, now that's awkward. I'll never explain this point. Don't at me about it. So let's see, we've talked about most of the kids. Well, Ty and Matt were kind of just background. Matt has one really good joke where he complains because Gabumon isn't voted the cutest Digimon. <laughs> ah, yes. That's pretty good. TK and Kairi, really kind of background except that Kairi likes to spy on people. And also likes to likes to insult TK sometimes. I mean, that's fair. Dude's got it coming. It's really hard not to dunk on him. Sora's just kind of nice. Sora's just there, man. She's really just in this movie. She's just really nice to Mei Mei. And Mimi, too. To both of them. She clearly wants them to get together. Maybe she has the crest of love, so she's just playing Cupid for them. Oh, that would be so good. She'll be the best woman in the in the wedding. Yeah, definitely. And then Joe and Mimi, they're like the main characters. They do all the stuff. I'm surprised Quinn didn't mention anything about Izzy's outfits, especially the one where he's just in overalls. Oh god, the overalls. I forgot to mention those. No, never ever wear the overalls. You just look like a farmer. Kid, you cannot. I do appreciate how Izzy's kind of just doing his thing. Yeah, he's he's clearly trying to grow up, but having some teething troubles. I'm surprised he was the one to call Mimi egocentric, though. Like, I, I, th- I thought, like, someone else would do it. Yeah, he really just kind of took charge there. But it kind of had to come from him for it to be meaningful. He's, like, the only person who hasn't ever criticized her. Is he, though? He totally has a crush on her. But I gave it so much more weight, because he was like, I totally fancy you, Mimi, but I'm gonna have to tell you off. They spent the last two movies, to say nothing of the last two seasons, really pushing that ship. I'm surprised she's actually okay with him, though. That's, uh, that's a thing, like... Ah, uh, she seems more interested in Mako. Still, wouldn't you be a little bit f***ed if the guy who told you off suddenly appeared in your cafe? They're still friends. Like, he didn't he didn't destroy their relationship. He said one mean thing to her. And he was also kind of right. Yeah, he's very much justified. Because, <laughs> like, she took down the helicopter. <laughs> I still say it's not Mimi's fault, it's Palmon's fault, but oh well. Not even Palmon's, is Togemon's. <laughs> I mean, the issue is that they told Mimi to wait until everybody got there to start fighting. And you can argue that that's not the right decision. Ogamon wasn't really a threat, they were just kind of in a field. So, like, waiting kind of made sense. Ogamon seemed pretty obsessed with that field, actually. He came back there, like, 
several times. That's true. Even after getting, you know, repeatedly shot. I'm surprised Leoma was able to just come to the real world and push him in, actually. Yeah, he kind of just does that. That's foreshadowing him being infected. Could argue that. Oh. Because only the infected Digimon can use the portals. Okay, because I was about to ask, like, how the hell did he come here alone now without Ogremon? Oh yeah, Hackmon is in the film as well, by the way. Oh, yeah, he still hasn't done anything. You mean Huckmon? Huckmon, Hackmon, whatever you call them. You know, like the Huckleberry Finn. They're just hiding in the background, as usual. Ah, uh, don't, don't worry about it. He's, he's just our messiah, okay? Don't worry about it. He's the larval form of our messiah. Didn't you know Huckleberry Finn is our lord and savior? Anyway, we've not spoken about the, well, probably the, the best scene in the whole film, which is the scene with Joe and Mimi just stood by the river. Oh, that's a very good scene. It's a good scene. It's such a strong scene. Oh, Joe's a good boy. Remind me too much of Evangelion, goddammit. That's a pretty Ava scene. It has so much just weight to it, though. Oh, but what did they call Mimi in the dub? Um, narcissistic. Uh, they have a term in Japanese for that. Uh, Jikochu. Yeah, Jikochu. Pikachu? Yes, Pikachu. Mimi is a Pikachu. Oh, but it's just so sad. And then when the rain comes down. Joe crying afterwards when Gomamot brought him the ramen. Oh god, I teared up in that one. Ugh. There's a lot of really good scenes between Joe and Gomamot. Gomamot is so good. I still want to say he doesn't really have an answer, but oh well. His answer is that it's okay to still like the things you liked as a kid. And also, maybe saving the world is more important than getting into med school. Maybe it is. It wasn't the point of Kari going to him and like, you know, it's not the matter if you have to fight or not, it's the matter that he's your partner and you should, you should always be with him. There's also that. You don't have a choice about fighting. Doesn't this go, road go both ways, though? What it comes down to is they're one of six people-ish, eight people, who can do anything about this situation. Let's forget digi- Digidestin around the world. Well, they're not exactly able to come to Tokyo on short notice. I'm sure the the, the, the secret services could use their help. That's true. But yeah, on any of the given attacks they've had so far, he's one of the only people who could possibly help. And he didn't turn up for most of them. Also, they've been losing every time. They've been pretty unsuccessful. That's a lie. They won against Kowagamo. After great damage had already been done. And Alphamon? After great damage had already been done. I mean, Alphamon was fine, he just left. Yeah, Alphamon left and Omnimon blasted a massive crater in, like, half the city. Yeah, but he left because he was gonna get blasted, that's the thing. Maybe, but still, it would, they were not particularly successful, they didn't prevent any real damage. Yeah, they don't have a kill count just yet. They haven't figured out anything about why any of this is happening. They've made no progress toward their goals. Izzy's made some progress in his own tech stuff. Ah, uh, yes, Izzy, yes, yes. We got that random email about how you need to go beyond the darkness. Yeah, just like, it's a prophecy. Do, do we ever find out who sent that, by the way? Nope, <laughs> nope we don't. Think it might be good, Genai? Uh, I'm sorry, but G- Genai, he hasn't been part of this. He was mentioned by name, but that's it. But let's not forget that our little friend from the Secret Service also got that message. I mean, Izzy said it could have just been spam, so maybe it was just spam. It was just like a, a good motivational message of the day <laughs> that's going around. That'd be pretty good. You know what, I, 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 I'm gonna think that maybe, just maybe, it was the Secret Service woman. No, because she's evil. Yeah, but she she does want them to succeed for now. But she's also evil. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Also, it kind of makes sense, considering it's her, because I'm pretty sure she went beyond the darkness. No, she she pretty well stayed in the darkness. It was either her or, or Daigo. I don't know. Hard to say. For reasons unknown, Stevie does not know why I'm saying this. I think it's probably Maki, if it's not Genai. It's Cody's grandpa. It's Cody's dad, he's not really dead. Because he's gone beyond the darkness. Look, guys, you don't get it. It was actually Matt's dad. After ma- making the complaint to the TV station, they sent him that. I'm so mad that Matt's dad still isn't uh, one of the Digidestins. He totally should be. You never know. It could have been, it could have been in, in, in the past and just doesn't remember. Yeah. Anyway, we should stop kind of hinting at spoilers and uh, maybe end the episode. Yeah, so what did we think of this one? Apart from that it was better than the first one. <laughs> I kind of liked the first one better. How? What? Why? Explain, please. The plot actually gets set up in the first one. Nothing really happened in this that meaningfully changed the situation. Everybody just kind of went about their lives until ten minutes before the end. I have to disagree there. I I think they should set it up for future events. Joe came back. They can mega digivolve now. Meikumo is completely gone insane. So I think they did a good job of setting up the characters in future events. 
Because now we have something to look forward to. It starts a pattern that Try uh, never breaks of, okay, we asked a bunch of questions last movie. We should definitely ask more questions instead of answering any of them. Yeah, but that was a problem the first film had as well, is that there were lots of questions. May, may I remind you that that was a, the problem with most Digimon things, because it's, it's Digimon. In the first season, it was kind of like that. Second season, also kind of like that. Third season, holy Third season didn't really do that so much, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's not forget the parasite that in, that infected the little girl and uses her repressed memories to, to just grow. And I'm sorry, I just ask why? Because it was cool. Fun fact: someone someone from Evangelion worked on season three. The same person directed it that I, that directed Serial Experiments Lane. Yeah, it's it's just Lane for kids. That's the important thing to realize. Which is why it's the best series of Digimon. <laughs> but anyway, this film is still much better than the first one. I, I agree with CV there. I'm sorry, Quinn. That's okay. You, you two are allowed to be wrong. I just found that it improved on, like, everything. The first one just felt slow and entirely reliant on the nostalgia. That's fair. I kind of like things that are slow. I was too bored by the first one, but I think this one, I enjoyed it a lot more, and it held up a lot stronger than the first film did for me. I'd say this one was better than the first one, but not by much. Uh, a lot of things I, I do enjoy. How they had a little bit of a focus on the kids in the first part. Hinting at Tai X May. Of course, that, that's always enjoyable. And Mimi X May. And May X TK. But oh well, uh, <laughs> May X everyone, basically. Yeah, they really push some May X everyone. Lots of May May. The Digimon antics were funny. Izzy's outfits were always on point. God, those overalls. Also that bow tie. He's not allowed to wear a bow tie. The bow ties are cool. Uh, and of course, the inclusion and death of Leomo is always my favorite part in any Digimon series. That's fair. That was a really good scene, though. So, if I had to rate this movie, I'd go with a Leomon death out of 10. Would we watch again? I can't remember if we rated the first one. No, we didn't. I just, I just had to make the joke. You know, I am personally of the opinion that you can rank the seasons by how well they pulled off the Leomon death. So, so that makes season three the best one, right? Yes. Yeah, it does. Especially the part when they abuse the, the, the whole, hey, the murderer is using the <laughs> the move of your partner Digimon. And it makes season two the worst, where they don't kill Leomon. Wait, they don't kill Leomon in season two? What? He was already dead from season one and never came back. I feel cheated now. It's kind of sad that Leomon doesn't die. Anyway, we can move on now. I rate this seal tears out of ten. <laughs> Oh god, why? <laughs> and Quinn, what do you rate it? I rate this self-centered out of 10. <laughs> we actually all kind of got across what we actually enjoyed. So basically, Leomon dying, Gomamo, and Mimi. Also, daters as a stand-in for Hooters, good choice. Ah, yes. Cheerleaders, yes, sure. And how they dance every so often. <laughs> and just all of the boys in the class being like, yep, I am wholeheartedly into this idea. They even got up, some of them, like, oh my god! This is incredible! Are you allowed to put this on the school computers? I'm very much looking forward to the next one, though. It's time to do an outro, so who wants to plug this stuff first? Quinn, you first. I have an as-yet-unpublished podcast, uh, Kingdom Hearts Recorded, that I'm hoping to have a website for you by the next time I come on, certainly by the last time. And otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, at RealYubico. I'll do links in the show notes to stuff. And Nelson, where can we find you? You can find me at such sites as Twitter at Demon Dragon Master and on YouTube at youtube.com slash Demon Dragon Master. Also, it's actually at Demon Dragon Mast on Twitter because it's too long. Uh, shut up. <laughs> Twitter censored me. I don't like this anymore. Yeah, thank you for joining me, you two. It was fun. It was. Thank you so much. Can't wait for this to go off the rails. Again? It does nothing but... Were we on the rails? For a brief time. Can't wait to go off, off the rails, then. We're gonna lose it all next time. Oh, wait, no, it's not lost, it's confession, Please damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I am here to sing! It seems weird, but now's our chance. Based on your Great. reaction...